You know, they have like those like Japanese garden dripping water peaceful things. They'll put them in like waiting rooms of the doctors. If I was gonna build one, this is what it would be. <laughs> What's up, Buck? Doug with Dini in the garage. I'm here at Vince's U-Pull, Marcy, New York, just outside of Utica, New York. The best yard, well, that I've been to anyway, my favorite. I'm here for a WK starter, among other things. I park my Scuba in the parking lot, and what should I see? Right in front of me, a WK. Do you think the owner of this fine Jeep here would have a sense of humor about it if I pulled this starter? Yeah. Probably not, but it would save me a whole lot of walking. Alrighty, I know I'm walking away from the sun, so you're probably getting nothing but glare. It's not in my eyes. That's what I really care about. Who cares about stuff like film quality? Uh, what I was getting at here was something I want to do. I've been doing this right here for years. You get in the yard, first thing you do, you extricate, hold on. There we go. You extricate a seat belt and use it as a, uh, shoulder strap for whatever you're carrying that day. I've done it, you know, you pull a AC pump, you still have two hours of walking around in the yard. Tie a friggin' whatchamacallit around it. Anyway, I want to grab material from a Grand Cherokee seat to actually make a little case for this bag. And then I'm gonna sew a, uh, I do sew, real men sew. Bet you didn't know that. Uh, oh, we're gonna have to talk about this stuff. Let me get this one out real quick. Anyway, uh, uh, I wanna get the seat material and the seat belt from a Grand Cherokee and sew up a nice little carrying case because this is the uh, 3 8 drive set that I carry in the yard. <sighs> Y'all wanna see what I'm looking at? Ooh, baby. All right, so we got an old Ferd here. According to the stick air, looking at a 1975 F350. I admit, I didn't know they were making the 350 in 75. This is a well-used farm unit, but my goodness, look at this old school cool. What's that? I guess that's how to, I had to jack it up. Today, there would have just been a phone number in there for AAA. Look at that, oh, somebody was loving on her. We got a little uh, oil pressure gauge, looks like something like that. She was the dually. There's a great Charlie Parr song. Got the dualies on his truck. He got the dualies on his pickup. If y'all don't listen to Charlie Parr, do. Do listen to Charlie Parr. I mean, yeah, she's well loved. What are these the uh, front bendies to? Oh my goodness, try to take me out. He knows I'm a Dodge guy. Look at this guy, oh man. Ford is coming with the classics today. You know that old commercial, Where's the Beef? <laughs> I found it. I found the beef. Look at this, make sure the bolts don't back out. They were wired together like a friggin' race car. This thing would pull a house off its friggin' foundation. Look at these bias plugs. Oh man. Oh, it's banging and clanging. Uh. Oh yeah, front drive shaft all out there. Loosey goosey. You just, you just tell me where to sign up, bud. 1953 Chevy, CK10. What exactly are these? These are 10 ply. You have to give me a size? Big, that's the size. Oh, is that it? Eight and a quarter by 20. Must be, right? Eight and a quarter by 20 but then what's that's more than 20 i don't know what i'm talking about man sometimes it gets hard being this dumb but i do my best i try to try to come out in his yard and give you all a little bit of knowledge on everything but in order to do that i have to have a little bit of knowledge on everything something i'm working on could you imagine come on boys time to get to work hop up in this thing now here's the real question Today, a truck like this would probably have an eight liter gasser, a six liter diesel. What do you think they were using to get that much work done? I mean, this is, 
those are the kind of tires that liberated France for fork's sake. So what kind of Motorb was Chevy putting in? I know in the 1500s around this time, you got a straight six and that was it. Ah, oh, shucks. Motorb's gone. My money's on straight eight though, right? Look how narrow this is. And just knowing what they were doing, I'll bet you there was a straight eight in this. If anybody knows, I'd love to hear it. Oh God, this truck was cooler than hell. Well, you know what? Thank goodness. Maybe the motor got a second life. And even the, the transmission. Yeah, there you go. So hopefully that's in someone's rat rod right now. Fingers crossed. Dang, the trucks are cool. See now, the reason I want to make that carrying case is instead of putting this down because it's uncomfortable because it's all janky, I would have just had it on my shoulder and then I don't risk losing it. Also, I can pick it up without looking like a spaz. They're a bunch of old school buses. Old furred school buses. Jeez, I tell you what, with van van life stuff the way it is, put that on the thumbnail. I get a million views. All right, we're a van life channel now. What do you want to know? Oh, they put the, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, you want access? Oh, you want an engine access? Well, you can go fork yourself, but <laughs> I mean, it's got the doghouse inside, so most of your work you would do from, but even that, I mean, for fork's sake. Oh, man. Nope. No, thank you. Look at that. There's your uh, throttle body all the way back in there. And then what's going on in the rest of this? Man, this bus is pretty clean, all things considered, right? Somebody would have uh, lived in this thing down by the river. So what is that? Is that the Triton V10? So I know they put that in a lot of these around. This looks like it's late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, hold on, let me put you forkers down. Hold on. All right, we've got some things out of the way now. Uh, oh, somebody took the whole intake or... Yeah, that must not be... Yeah, it looks like the intake's actually gone. I was wearing my sunglasses on the side, so I couldn't see. Give me some clue. Or let's get to the where see if we can't find the spark plugs. Give me, give me the old counting routine. Oh man, this would have been a mess. What is going on here? I'm so confused. What is that? That looks like a throttle body. But intake, this is a weird motor. What I don't know enough about these. This is the Triton V10, I think, just based on the friggin' size. But my goodness. Oh, maybe she's a diesel. I didn't even consider the possibility that she were a diesel. The easiest way to figure that one out will be the uh, the feeler neck. International. Yep, there you go. Furred body international motor. It's going to be a diesel. Right? God, life is hard and hard. You're stupid. Yeah, gotta be an international you know, diesel. Okay, that's why that's why it looked weird. That's why we didn't have the normal intake. Go figure. That's why I couldn't find spark plugs. If you can't find spark plugs, she might be a diesel. Well, Jeff Fox, were the info? Sorry. Again, pick up our discarded tools and we'll glance around. Oh, this is an old one, right? Here's this guy. Take our bits. GM. 94 GM, I'm guessing, right? What was GM putting in these in 94? 454. No, no chance it was anything else, right? Battery box. Let's see. Chevrolet. Trans good. Motor good. Jeez, it's got the motor. Let's go see. It's got to be a 454, right? In 94. I recently, at 34, learned how to identify a 454. I'm embarrassed. How do I get this open? Oh, it actually pivots up. You kind of wouldn't think that, right? Unless I could knock those pins out. Oh, well, that was really hard. It's got a self-holderizing routine here. Let's It's a, uh, it's a 454, I think. Oh man, 94, was that TBI? God, I just wouldn't want to have to work on this thing. Christmas. I jacked upstairs, probably just from getting carried over here. Oh man. All right. Oh, what a nightmare. 
yet. So, because it's got all this crap on top, you'd have to take that off to get the doghouse cover off. So that's all you're getting. Oh, uh, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plugs means V8 means the 454. There's no way a 350 is being asked to move this thing around. Especially not with them dualies in the back. Oh, okay. Now that's cool. Oh, buddy. They just don't make single cabs like that anymore. The power joke. Just kidding. I'm a fan of the power stroke. Oh, what? This interior was even clean. This truck had a lot of life left, eh? I mean, look. Oh, you know. It's even weight reduced, so you go faster. Redneck diamonds, no big deal. Auto box, that's probably why she went here. If it was a five speed, someone would have saved her. Easy. Don't be so damn dramatic. Power smoke, what do we got? Direct injected. Yeah, buddy. Bet this Motorb's got a bit of life left in her if anybody needs a donor. Here she sit, broken hearted. What's you, what's you? Another Ferd? Probably another Triton. Oh, we decided the first one wasn't a Triton. It was a Diesel. Diesel. Knock. 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 That was a Diesel. What in the... <laughs> I'm sure it just got... Oh, you know what? They tried to put it down on the, uh, the fiberglass instead of on the frame. But... Little speed hole. And once again, I put my 3 8 drive set down, risking losing it and getting her stolen. Caution, rotate, blah, blah, blah. Somebody, where's the tag? Here we go. Oh, it's a 493. And uh, again, no spork plugs. So that's gotta be the uh, international. I guess it'd be the IDI. Is anybody else a fan of both um, zip ties and bias flies, but also listens to uh, Simon and Garfunkel? They got the one song, is it the boxer? La la la. La 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 la. That was what it would say. I D I. I D I D I. I don't know. I guess I'm bent. Uh, but here's the thing. We didn't really come here to look at the ferds. I just got distracted by cool classic stuff. Once again, I've got you pointed directly into the sunlight. What am I supposed to do? Walk like this? That's weird, right? Ah, I look weird enough filming in the yard. I can't walk backwards, too. We're going down here. This yard does something cool. Some yards do this, some don't. You can ask them about certain vehicles. Here's the uh, Outbacks I need to look at for Eric. And then here, nope, oh, that's a dollar. Where in the fancy? Here, let's put you down for the full effect. Grand Cherokees. So, this is a reason you buy Grand Cherokees. Derby life, here you go. Ford Taurus Derby car. Now what's really weird is that this car doesn't look crunched at all. So this was not in the Derby. Maybe they were thinking about putting her in the Derby. Maybe it was just an advertisement. I can tell you right now, this was not a Derby car. Probably would have been a decent one though. This is when Ford was still, or just American car uh, makers in general were still making things a little bit heavier. An 07 Taurus, maybe not. Maybe I lied. I didn't realize it was that old. All right. Now the biggest problem is this let's pull a starter out of a wk wks don't have the best access and it's all muddy here here's a wk i'm guessing by the chrome though that it's not going to be a 3.7 which is what my mother says nope 4.7 do 3.7 and 4.7 have the same starter i'll bet they do let's consult the rock auto If y'all don't know, Rock, Rock Auto is basically an online database for parts cross-referencing. It's amazing. If you ever need to know what year also has this, that, or the thing, Rock Auto, bud. Rock Auto. It's right there. It's organized properly. Like, it's not... There's some other websites like Car-Part. That thing is a mess to navigate. Um, Rock Auto, though. So you just find the year. I'm just going to go... What year is this thing? This is an 07. My mother's is an 07. This is an 07. Cool. So we can try... Uh, Compare, oh, stay there little fella. I stopped bringing the tripod in the yard because obviously 
it's frowned upon. Grand Cherokee with the 37. Uh, it's gonna be an electrical starter motor. Looking at the 120 is a 7939, and that was in the 37. 7939, and in the 47, the starter is a. 7939. Is that what I said? Yeah. I think they're the same. Hmm. If I... Oh, I didn't bring a battery. What an idiot. If you're going to pull anything electric, bring a drill battery so you can test it. I have one in the car. I guess I could test it in the car and then... Uh... <sighs> Whatever. Here's something you don't see all the time. Moostang. Moostang in the yard. This is a 4.0 Mustang? <laughs> Question mark? Why are you advertising that? <laughs> Did you guys see what was behind the Mustang? Because I didn't. I desperately hope this didn't happen in the yard and somebody was driving around like this. Y'all ready? One, no peeking. No peeking. One, nope, no peeking. Two, three. I give you convertible panther body. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. <laughs> I want one so bad. So what you do, you cut the top off, weld this back door shut, put in a little roll bar here. Done. Rock that thing all summer. In the fall, right as it starts getting cold, you drag it to the yard and forget about it. I've wanted to do that with a WJ for years. Buy the cheapest one I can find, get her running. Um, in like April, cut the top, do a little bit of welding, make sure it's structurally sound. Maybe you can rip all the cloth out of it, put some lawn chairs in it, and then rock that as a homemade convertible all summer. Yeah. Now, I suspect this may have happened here for God knows what reason, but maybe not. Uh, back to our start hair. Hey, look at this. Ah, uh, I found a flashlight. Still work? I don't know. Found a flashlight though. Take that home, see if she works. What's going on? Now the other reason this is a good donor is it's already got the front drive shaft out, which is something they suggest you do when pulling a WK starter. It's not necessary. Let's try to pretend like it is. But it does make it easier. Oh man. This starter's staying right where it is. Can you see her, man? I mean she's just a crusty unit. Um, but you can see the front drive shaft would be coming. Right, right through here. Um, if the front diff were it, it'd actually be dump, dumped right here. I don't think we'd be able to get at it because the pumpkin would be right there. Um, and they tell you to pull it out. You can sneak it out, but. But anyway, I don't, I mean, I'd rather buy a cheap new one than, uh, than take one like that that, you know, you're, you're just risking on. I'm really, 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 really trying to get my mother a reliable car. I mean, there's nothing worse than mom's being stuck on the side of the road so let's keep looking but it's interesting that's good i'm glad we confirmed the 47 is the same because that opens up 1500s uh durangos all kinds of crap so uh 3747 starter let's go i am going to take one thing out of this grand cherokee i'm going to cut this whole piece out and use that as the front of my uh bag make it a jeep bag and i'm going to use this seat because it's already forked. I was going to do that one, but the back of it's still nice. I'm not, contrary to popular belief, the biggest arsehole in the world. I actually do my best to leave the yard in a, in a good way for, for my fellows. I don't just break stuff that I don't need. So this seat's already forked. There is nobody on the planet who's going to pull this seat. It's just not happening. So I'm going to cut this out, take it with me. Um, oh, the seatbelt's already gone out of this guy, but seatbelts could be from anything. It's just a Oh, principality the matter thing. Yeah, I'll probably take these this seat up to be my strap. Um, yeah, maybe just cut this out of the back and that'll be the back of it. Let's see about that. Goodness. Okay. 
Okay. I may literally just use the uh, the Jeep emboss, but either way, I got a pretty, pretty good piece of fabric there. What I'm going to do now is all right to the untrained eye. I'm sure this looks like a uh, pile of crap, but got a Jeep logo for my bag, and I've got one side. I'll use this, and I like that it's kind of thick and padded, so I can. Uh, really um, make a nice tight fit in there for my little uh, box. And you can see this is more than big enough for one side. I could probably, I mean, if I was trying to just hack it, I could probably just do it like that, sew up the sides and just stick it in, but I'm gonna make something a little nicer than that. So let's keep looking. All right, bud, I was heading down to this little Charmander there, but this sassy 350 caught my eye. <sighs> With a five liter. Wait, what? 350. One. It's a five liter. That's weird, right? Oh, no, it's a five eight. Oh my goodness! I was so confuzzled. I'm just not a Ford guy, so when I see stuff, it doesn't always register as to what it is. Look at the beefy front sprangs. Oh yeah, get sprung, bud. Sassy. I don't think I'd want one of these with a five eight though. You better sign me up for the Daisel. Oh, I guess a five eight is a 351 isn't it i take that windsor my dad had a 250 windsor that truck two-tone what up top was like dark blue with the tan in the middle it was basically the eddie bauer colors but it wasn't the eddie bauer edition that was the truck he sold for his honda accord i don't know dad i don't know bud oh man this charmander is nice look at that these cars i've said time and time again didn't get a fair shake they came out Let's see what that sticker says. They came out right um, in time for the 2008 recession when nobody wanted gas guzzlers. Gas prices were through the roof. Seems to happen every eight years. Gas prices go through the roof. What's up with that? So weird, right? Uh, anyway, on top of that, Chrysler wasn't doing pretty good at that time. So these things would have killed today, though. And they're, they're just cooler than heck. Uh, what's the sticker say? Warning. You are illegally parked for one or more of the following. No valid parking permit. All right, let's see what's under the hood. Uh, let's make sure it's not a Hemi before we even bother with all that. It's the Hemi. I thought it might be with all the chrome and fancy pants. That thing got. I mean, she's headed back to Mother Earth Gaia in a big way. Can you even open this thing anymore? Goodness. Here's a Dub J. This Dub J looks, you know what? Got a little cactus plant hanging from the rear view. Got some of the, the beefy Dynapros on her. Still had a little life left in them. Some nice uh, window vents. Do I pull these for Willy? I've kind of wanted them. Now this is the seat I was thinking about pulling just because it's, oh wow, some studs in the back. Oh, this WJ has some things to offer here. Let's put our, uh, let's put our purse down. And uh, wander around here. What are we looking at? Select D, select track. And this thing went in terrible shape. I mean, it damn near came from the factory with that rust. Studded snows in the back on some different wheels, but I almost feel, oh man, I almost feel like they would have been okay. Tell me there's only three of them. God dang it, why is there only ever three? These Dynapros would have had some life left in them. What year are they? Give me a date. They only put the date on one side, so it's like 50 50 if you're gonna find a date. Have date will travel. How much time do you think I've spent on camera looking for dates on tires? Probably an hour of my life at least. Made in Korea. Sorry, was that? I'm not supposed to say stuff like that. Okay, well these tires have been around since the beginning of time then. They don't actually have a date. Oh man, there you go. I call that the Edmund Fitzgerald look. AKA Titanic chic. It's been long enough that that's not insensitive. I'll tell you what though, I almost forgot my purse. Let's keep moving. College kid, right? CR Bulldogs. I don't know who that is, but. Yep. 
Away she goes. No one bites the dust. Sad. A little sad. Here's the thing. In 10 years, that thing will be a survivor. I'll be paying 3,500 bucks for one like that. I'm really not looking forward to that, but since y'all keep sending them to the yard when they barely even look like this, what else am I gonna do, huh? What do you want me to do? Oh, this one has the keys. I should pull it for the skim because the skim on my red one is all screwed up. I like these white WJs. I've owned a lot of WJs in a lot of colors. I never owned a white one. God, this is another one. Brand new rotors on it. Oh, does it have pads in the front? Because I need front pads. Dang it. Am I pulling? I really should pull all that stuff so I can get Ruby up and running again. I don't have a ton of time today. Dang it. Oh, and I didn't really bring the right tools for it. And I, and and also, also, I didn't grab a um, wheelbarrow. <sighs> Life is hard and harder to be stupid. I don't even have a way to get those off. I don't have a 19. So I'm sure there's a cross wrench literally right here. All right, I'll make a deal with you. If I get that tire off, I pull the front brake pads because again, they're brand new. It'd be stupid not to. They're, I think they're $3 a piece here. Yeah, those are brand new. All right. Set up shop. I'll say it ain't so. <laughs> well, that's the 19 we were gonna use. <laughs> she's uh, she's had the good bits stripped out of her. Yeah, that's not doing nothing. Let me see if I can find another one. Y'all are some bad people. I mean, this is why I don't really like humanity. I don't get along with my fellow human. You know what we're looking at here? A basically pristine, no, okay. Maybe I'm getting a little carried away. A totally salvageable Columbia Edition WJ. She's barely got any dingers. The rust, I mean, look, this right here, this is how you tell on WJs. Go in here, if it starts, that's where it starts getting soft. It's, it's nice and hard still in there, all this. Pull that down, look, that's not rotted. Oh, that's real solid metal right there. So, you know, this one was good. That's where you go. That's where they start, especially well, in, in road salt states. Bumper was in decent shape before she got taken off, probably so someone could steal the tow hooks. Interior don't look bad. Except for whatever some animal did to it. I mean, that, that ain't nothing. You know what I'm going to do? Seat's already screwed. <laughs> I'm going to make myself a Columbia Edition socket set holder. You're darn right. But what I really came in here for was uh, see if the... Nope, doesn't look like it. Oh, maybe. Oh, there we go. That's what I needed. Oh, look. Anybody want a Labatt hat? I don't drink beer. And if I did, it wouldn't be Canadian beer. No offense, Canadians. You're some of the nicest folk I know. But I happen to live a short trip from one of the best breweries in the whole world. Yingling. Can't tell you how to spell it, but dang, does it taste good. Alrighty, Roo. That, that's what I thought was gonna happen. Let's see if we can't persuade it to not do that. Oh yeah, there we go. This thing was loved. Barely rusty, did not belong in the yard, neither did the over or the uh, Columbia edition next to it. People. I will give you, who am I kidding? I'm broke as hell. I can't afford to be saving all the WJs. I was gonna say, I'll give you $50 over scrap for any clean WJ, but that's just not true. I wish it was, I wish I was in that position, but I'm not. Here's a unicorn too. All five of these lugs, these two part lugs, you know how crappy these things are. All five of them there are in good shape. Though you can see they're starting to bulge out just a little bit. Wonder if he had these replaced or if this thing was just garage capped and absolutely babied, washed. Cause I'm up here, I mean, I'm not even in Jersey right now. I'm in the middle of New York state. I mean, you think Jersey gets road salt up here, forget about it. They've already had a foot of snow before Thanksgiving. So for a, tr a truck to be this clean, one that's almost 20 years old, it was either baby, garage kept, or it's had a lot of stuff replaced. Let me finish taking these off. I'll grab the brake pads 
I'll bring it in if there's anything exciting. Ow! Oh, those fornicators are on there. Here's a little hint. If you have limited tools, but you have an extension, find a socket that goes over the end, a deep one if you can. And, oh, you just made your tiny 3 8 that much longer. You're welcome. Yep. Oh, Christmas. I get people all the time telling me, but you're going to break that. If you step on it like that, you're going to break it. Listen, this thing can't break a bolt off. It's not any good to me. So that's the step test. You don't pass it. It goes straight in the fork it, bork it. Or back to the uh, Chineseium overlords. Oh, there we go. I'll leave that caliper up in case anybody else wants it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will happily take those. I don't know what kind of pads they are, but they look decent. I mean, shoot, if they last me 10,000 miles for $12, yeah, I'll take that. Let me grab the other side, then we'll continue our search for a starter. All right, friends, I mentioned skim before. Security key immobilization module is what it stands for, I do believe. Uh, and what it is is a ring uh, right behind this cover that recognizes a chip in your key. Uh, so if you try to start it with the wrong key or with whatever, whatever, you get it. It's a security thing. The problem is those modules can go bad and then you won't be able to start your car. You'll get a no crank, no start, or it'll start for a second and then it'll kill the fuel pump. Um, you can only pull them if you have the keys that go with it though. And this is one of those parts that I've been neglecting for years. Like, oh, I'll get around to pulling a spare. I'll get around to pulling a spare. Now the WJs are it's starting to become a little more rare. I think it's time to actually pull a spare because this is one part I do not have and this will leave you dead in the water for want of a little a little um, security module unit. You know, you'll see. So I'll keep this on the shelf. I, I've actually had issues with one of mine before, uh, the one in Ruby. When it gets moisture sometimes, I was plowing and I had the heat on and I was opening the door open up so inside it was getting foggy and all of a sudden my, my skim stopped working. You just crank for days. It's like it gets no no fuel or spark. Ah, oh, fork. Brought the world's crappiest screwdriver with me. I can't remember if you need to pull the ECU for the skim as well. I don't think so. I think the, all the logic and knowledge is in that one little module right here. You'll see it's a little ring that goes right around the the key thing there. And uh nice. don't do that because I will just break you. I don't want to, but I will. I can't remember if this kick panel has to come down. I think I'm just gonna pull it down anyway. It's been a while since I took apart a uh, WJ dash. Or cockpit, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Looks like it's 10 millimeters. WJs live in that delightful world where they're half metric, half standard. My favorite thing. Hey. Oh, you fell. Come on, bud. What, you been drinking? Still drunk from Thanksgiving Day, ain't you? He was going in hard. I know. It's actually the day, no, it's the Saturday after Thanksgiving right now. Eric and I were in the yard yesterday. I didn't bring a camera. It was 38 degrees and rainy and I just, I needed a coil for my car, my Subaru. Besides, when I record Subaru stuff in the yard, y'all don't watch it. You only want me for my Jeep content, which is sad because I like Subarus. And Eric loves Subarus, but you guys don't want to see our stuff about Subarus. I will never love a vehicle more than I love the WJ. You know what? I got minimal battery. Y'all don't need to see this. This panel comes down through some amount of fasteners. Some right here. I think there's one under here. Yep. That just pulls down. It's not attached with anything. This one right there. This one over here. 
And then I think it comes right down. There might be one more, but let's get that down and then I'll bring you in for the actual skim stuff. All right, I know I'm always yapping about this little gear wrench set that I absolutely love, but here's why. I mean, anybody can, you know, with the sockets and everything, but it's got all the bits in there uh, and it's got such a great bit holder. Offset and reversible with the, the thumb roller. I mean, you really can't ask for more than that. And uh, I could not get my screwdriver in here, so I'm missing a fastener. So, oh, duh, I forgot this comes off. This just pops out, pull it out towards you. It's just pressure clips. And then there's two more under here, I forgot. Yeah, two more tens, one there, one there. I'll pop those and then we'll have our skim out. This is embarrassing. I, it's been too long since I've been working on WJs. You don't pull those tens out here, even though I just did. It's the screw right there. My goodness. I swear, I used to know how to work on these things. I've actually, uh, I, I've, I've worked on you know, two or three in my time, believe it or not. It's embarrassing, but I've been, uh, I've been daily in the Subaru and messing with other cars. Honestly, I have not put in much time on WJs. Apparently, I'm, I'm losing my touch some. So, we'll get home. We'll get Ruby running. What do you think? Now, I do need to get out of this yard because I'm in upstate New York. There we go. And I need to be heading home. I'll put this over here in case anybody needs it. Because that's the right thing to do. When you pull a part off, when you pull a part off, you have two options. You can put it over there, nice and safely, leave the fasteners on the floor. Or you can throw it out here to get stepped on, rained on, frozen, and destroyed. Those are your options. This shift lever. Somebody could have put this inside next to the vehicle and then somebody else who might have needed it come to, could have come and grab it. Instead, it's junk. I don't know what it goes to. Maybe it goes to this. Probably not though. Let's see. You think it goes to this thing? Actually, it could. Yep, it definitely did. All right, I'll go find it and I'll put it back on there. But you get my point. Oh, look at that. Fancy pants. Sassum frassum, right? Nothing says I have disposable income like an analog clock. Alrighty, friends, not certain what you guys can see. The skim unit is right here with the, those barcodes on it. Plugs in right here. We'll probably be able to undo that plug. Yep, there we go. And it looks like about a T10, maybe. Hope I have one small enough. Shoot, I don't know if I do. Wow, that is a bummer. Did all this yapping about how good this kit is. It's got, it goes down to T20. It does not go T15 and T10. I didn't realize that. I thought this was, hmm. All right, how else are we gonna get that skim out? I'm not above just breaking that one little bit of plastic around the fastener, but I'd rather not if we can avoid it. Sometimes you can get a needle nose inside. That torques, but not this time. And honestly, this is just too far down to the other side of the yard for me to go back and get something. Uh, it's such a bummer because it's such a rare find to get the skim with the key there. Get some of these other switches out of the way. those back there. I even try to get this one out if I can. There we go. Now, come here a little skimmy. A little skimmy skim skim. I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna break it. The plastic anyway. Yeah, because it just slides off this key thing there. I feel like such an arse if I screw this up. Uh, what I'm gonna do, this little kit right here, see it's got this thing down here. I guess it's like a belt clip or something. It goes on the back. I'm gonna 86 that because I don't need it. We took that set that I was calling the best set in the world. I found a little quarter inch extension with the offset tip. That's gonna be mighty useful. And there we go, T10, T15, purchased at Lowe's. They are the Dewalt joints. I actually got them in um, in like three packs. These are four bucks, so now if I break or lose one, 
And what we're going to do is finagle this little guy down in like, uh, like so, right? And then sneak these guys around him. Put this guy back in. And there you go. Now, it's the most complete set. Give me this thing and a Leatherman. I'll rebuild an aircraft carrier for you. No joke, bud. No joke. Okay. That actually went exactly as planned. Mostly. That mostly went exactly as planned. There's the fastener we left a little bit. But you see, it didn't actually break anything too major. I did put a little crack over here. Now this here, uh, there's all wiring in there and that's what senses your key. So hopefully I didn't just screw that up. Uh, they're gonna charge me five bucks for this though. It's worth the risk. It's worth the risk. I will test it on one of my WJs to make sure it works before you know counting on it. But that's crazy, man. We got a new, what was the key that went with it? Did I already put it in my pocket? Nope, that's my Subaru key. Subaru key. Wow, I really spread out in this truck, didn't I? All right, here we go. Skim and key and door guy. Check. Brake pads that are gonna cost me $12. Check, let's see, is there a manufacturer on there? No. PWR Z16. Doesn't uh, power stop use Z as distinguishers? Maybe these are power stop brakes? I don't know. But they look new enough, right? I mean, damn, like brand new. They look brand new. Like the guy put them on and then on the test drive decided to take this thing to the junkyard. So let me clear, clear my stuff up here. Um, I'm going to just look around for some starters because I got to get out of here. I'll pull you guys in if we see anything interesting. If not, there are literally just two Subarus that might have the lift struts Eric needs. So we're definitely going to look at those. And then we'll get out of here. Alrighty, friends. Uh, I walked around the Jeeps for another 20 minutes. Found some interesting stuff. But I was trying to keep this video from being an hour and a half long. Plus, I'll be up here in another month around Christmas time. We'll do more videos then. Uh, there were two Outbacks in the yard that might have the lift struts Eric needed. One of them is this one. Something tells me I'm not going to find the rear lift struts I was looking for, though. Oh, actually, that's not true. There's one of them, but his has the power lift. Uh, so that's not going to do it. This was row 66, the other one's in low row. Uh, let's consult our list. Uh, 45, I-45 for imports, 45. It's gonna be a black 2015 Subaru Outback. Yep, that was, must have been the 16 there. Let's go to Finder. No big deal. So we're gonna walk out of here today with some supplies to make a bag that um, I'm gonna talk to the guy and get that for free i'm not paying him for that uh these brake pads will be three bucks a piece 12 bucks for new brake pads and if i find this lift strut i think it was 20 bucks i passed on all the starters because none of them looked like a huge improvement like i wouldn't inherently trust them and uh i'm not gonna be able to get back up here for a month to return it more than a month which means i'll miss the boat on returning it so yada 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 i guess we'll just have to we'll, we'll buy mom a new starter i think that's the way to go is the point we're winding down on this Vigia though. I have to find 40. I'm thinking now, the way these numbers are going, that 46 might have been down that way, but on the other side. I think I missed the boat on that. So. Oh, what are you? Or were you? Gutted to pieces, but this thing looked like it was fun back in the day. What are you? Oh, this is a Civic uh, CRX or um, Del Sol, probably, right? Is this a Del Sol? I don't know. Someone will tell me. Yeah, I think it's a Del Sol, right? Because the CRX was like a. Uh, squatted hatch thing. Wow, that's a tiny car. Probably had a VTEC in there. I don't know. Some Honda guy will let me know. What year? 1993. Year of our Lord. These things are supposed to be pretty dope. Eric the car guy loves them, don't he? Alright, let me turn you guys off until I figure out where in the fancy fork I'm going. There's 40. I'm thinking 46 might get into the GMs though. There's a turd Yoda. There's 44. What am I doing? My goodness, life is hard and harder for stupid. All right, I've been coming to this yard as long as I've known my wife, which is, uh, I don't know, ask her, she probably remember. Gotta be like seven, eight years. How long has this tree been here? I guess I just never make it to this corner of the imports or maybe they just spread it out. I, I've never been in a yard where there's just a, Giant ass tree. Kind of makes me want to bring a picnic lunch next time. Uh, well, friends, you know, I said these brake pads are going to be $3 a piece. I 
apparently lied to you. Price has changed. Brake pads are going for a dollar twenty. My bill on the brake pads was five dollars and thirty-two cents. I don't know how you beat that. If if you're still adverse to uh, junkyard brake pads, then I guess go spend forty bucks. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, bud. A guy like me though, if I want to keep my collection of crappy old WJs, considering I'm in no way a well-off affluent American, I gotta do stuff like save on brake pads. So, goodness, I just had to share that one with you. That made my darn day. Tell you what, bud. Five dollar. 30 something cent. I wish I'd taken the rotors. No, see, rotors though, because they're cast iron, which is uh, subject to commodity prices. I'll bet you those are still, I don't know what they are. I don't know that I've ever bought rotors in the yard. Have you? You ever bought rotors in the yard? I tell you what, I would really like to own a, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, a rotor turning machine. I think that'd be really useful in today's world. Let me comment down in the squawk boxes. Let me know, would you pull junkyard brake pads? I mean, these are, these fancy fornicators are brand new. You'd be an idiot not to. Uh, and starters too, man. I, I, you know, I got a little bit more, I was a little bit more um, discerning with my choice on starters than I was on these brake pads. Because brake pads, if they're a little uneven, they'll wear themselves in or, or for 12 bucks worth the gamble. You know, gambling 40 bucks on a starter that may leave you stranded on the side of the road. You get it. So comment down in the squawk boxes, uh, like and subscribe as people say. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.